first one, mount, okay. So main thing with the mount position is not defending what your partner doesn't have. So I see it a lot. As soon as somebody mounts, you're here, okay, exactly. Best thing this does is it helps you hold your head up. Okay, I may be defending my neck, but you can see how my elbows are away from my ribs. Any pressure on the shoulders, driving the hips up. I've now exposed my arms, but anytime you're allowed to get in a high mount, you lose the use of your hips. So I can bridge as much as I want, but I'm not gonna move weight, okay? So, one option you have if they keep a posture position. I need to be able to bring his weight forward to take pressure off the hips. Okay, so I want grips inside the belt. And when you bridge, think about trying to dump them over the head. Okay, so once I can get him forward, I want to lift here. Okay, now you can see the space I've created between myself and his hips. Okay. And one thing to think about is don't try and lift and then bridge. <clears throat> Okay, I want to bridge and push. One more. So like I said, this is an option <coughs> if they're sitting back, they're staying heavy, so it really doesn't matter how much I bridge. Um, so I want fingers in and feet as close as you can get to your butt. At this point I don't have to worry about him grape binding because his weight has to come forward. Okay, so when you bridge, lift above your head. Here, knees in, hooks, and get your underhooks here. Okay, one more. So fingers in, elbows tight, bump and push. Here. Another thing too is if I keep my head here, my hips only go so far. But if my head comes up, I cover that much more distance to be able to elevate my hips. But you got it? Sure. All right, let's try it out. If they know the mount position, they know they want their base low and heavy here. Okay, so with that option, I use the frame here, okay? So it doesn't matter if, if I'm doing this, I'm still gonna give him that option to open up the elbow, okay? So, framing across and pressuring to the opposite hip, right? and this one here, okay? So I'm controlling that wrist and pushing. Okay, what you don't want to do is push too much on the same side hip, which will expose the arm. So it's more of a push and then elbow in. Okay, another thing that's important from here, same thing is I keep my head up. Okay, I keep my head up in order for him to do anything, he has to posture. And that's where the bridge can come in. Okay, so frame here. Nice and tight. Watch it in this. Okay, so if he stays in this position here, so it's this side I'm gonna escape to. Okay. So that leg goes straight and I offset my hips to where now my toes are pointed out. So when you bridge, over exaggerate that bridge to create the space you need. So when I bump, I now use my elbow to push. So I frame here, leg straight, and adjust to where <clears throat> your toes are out. Okay. So when I bridge, I bridge over, push. Get my half guard. 
Always block this bicep. If not, you're going to get flattened out. <coughs> Here, bump. Don't feed it to me. And here. One more. So remember, your frame's not on the hand, it's the wrist here. So up, push, make sure that knee comes to your elbow, underhook, and control that bicep. A good uh, rule of thumb is, like when I teach the kids, and I know you've all seen it, the home alone, chin in the hands, head up. So now when I bridge, you can see how much more and aggressive the bridge is, as opposed to this. So now I stop when my hand touches. Here, I bridge even more. Okay. And with the frame, when you bridge, it's not up, it's over, and then create that space. Because now their weight goes that way, I can slide that leg through and get the end up. Because you can't bridge straight up with one leg. So here, bump, and then feed that knee in and get your knee up. Some of you are having problems with the bridge portion. Where you're bumping and you don't feel there's enough space. That goes back to how you hip escape when we do warm ups. If I'm doing this, you can see I have absolutely no hips. It's just touch your toes. But if I bump, push, and come back, it's mimicking this position. I'm moving your weight. I'm moving my leg out. I'm coming back. I'm going again. And I'm reestablishing my core. So, now if he wants to choke me, that good stuff. Okay, like I said guys, escapes work if the position's wrong, okay? A lot of the stuff from side control, mount, uh, back position, it's setups to other positions. If he doesn't, even if he doesn't want the arm bar or the choke, naturally, I want to do this. What's that do? Separates my elbow from my ribs, and now he has the arm bar. Okay? So, but it doesn't mean don't try. Okay? But what I want to do is make sure that when I control this wrist, that my head comes up and I tuck my elbow into his hip. Because if I do this, I'm keeping his hand in place, but I'm also exposing my elbow. But if I sit up, I can actually put my elbow into his hip, okay? Your second grip is gonna be behind the shoulder or tricep, and essentially I'm keeping the hand in place. Okay, he can't transition his weight this way with this grip, okay? So I'm always sweeping to this side, he has no base. If I go the other way, exactly, okay? So, same side leg blocks. Now, to keep them from grapevining, especially if your toes point out, is once you block, walk your heel back in. Try to extend that leg, this one. He has to be able to go that same direction as my leg, okay? But if I block his ankle and I walk my heel back in, he can't extend that leg, but straight. That's fine. I come back here and I can reset. Same thing with this one. The closer you get it to your butt, less likely he's able to 
grapevine. Okay, and this gives me more of a palpable uh, bridge too. So once I'm here, it's up to move the weight and then over. So once you're here, who knows what the first step is? You're asking who? <laughs> yeah, thanks, Tuan. Yes. Yeah, there you go. So the reason you control the bicep is why, Joel? Keep it from coming back. So, Joel? Joel? Anybody? Yes. So, for the beginners, this grip is usually set up for cross chokes. Okay. So I do all that work. I get here. I get him over. I don't block that bicep. I give him the position. Okay. So right away, as soon as his shoulders start to touch the mat, remember it's up, over, and block. Okay. Now, once I've done this, I can work to break the grip. So, who knows what not to do once I break that grip? Exactly. So he grabs, I do this, it's back and forth, keep it, and then this goes right into being able to stand up. Sure. So whenever you break that grip, control that sleeve. One more. So partner has a grip and come over more of the wrist than the elbow. Okay, as close as you can get here. Nice and tight. Grab the skin if possible. <laughs> Walk and block. Reason I blocked this leg is so he can't post his foot. So remember it's up and over. Here I'm good, because even if he tries to reach, I can posture up. Okay. Sure. Any questions? Yeah. Yes. One thing with the grapevine is if he's grapevine, he's stuck in that position also. But let's say that Tuan is able to grapevine. Okay. If you're able to clear it, bring it back tight. Okay. He's going to follow wherever this goes. It works better for him when I try to bridge. But if I can go all the way out and come back. Like a windshield wiper. And then bring him back to your butt. It's the same thing, don't do this. And then come back. But you have to think if he's in this position, there's not much he can do from the low mount. This just keeps me from being able to bridge. I got it? Sure. 